after having given an introduction to this course consisting of four smaller four week courses spanning from the beginning electric vehicles to renewable energy specifically in context of India looking at technology as well as economics. I am going to start today the first of this course which is going to be the introductory course which will introduce what the electric vehicles is, what the current state of that in India is, the basic technology, the whole concept of the power and forces that work on any vehicle, vehicle dynamics and then get into subsystems which consist of electric drivetrain versus a petrol or diesel drivetrain, uh, IC engine drivetrain. This is what this course will be. This will be four weeks course and I am going to start with today the overview of electric vehicles. So, the first part of it is introduction to electric vehicle. What, what makes it electric vehicle? What is electric vehicle? Just start very simply with that. Look at this. Look at this as a, what you see here is a normal petrol vehicle. There is a drivetrain, there is an engine. So, basically this is a vehicle, it has a drivetrain and this drivetrain has an engine and a fuel tank. Fuel tank is petrol or diesel, engine is IC engine and this makes the whole vehicle being driven. Mm? This will drive the wheels and the vehicles will move. What we really need to worry in this kind of vehicle all the time that what is the torque that is being produced because torque is what is going to move the vehicle and at different speeds and torque into speed will be the power. So, basically this will vehicle with a certain power you will have to provide certain torque and speed torque into speed is power you must keep this in mind all the time. So, you can get more torque less speed or more speed or less torque at a fixed power. So, if you are driving the vehicle in the beginning when you want to start the vehicle, you may require larger torque to start the vehicle. Speed is very low at that time, speed is small, torque is large, that is the starting phase. But once you are driving and suppose you are driving in a highway and there is no obstacle and you are just free running it, that is the time the torque requirement is not that large, you will learn of that, but you want a higher speed and torque into speed will be the power and any vehicle drivetrain will give you a maximum power and you can split into this. A very important component of this drivetrain is the fuel tank. The fuel tank will in a petrol vehicle will be just a tank, maybe a few thousand rupees. It will be a container for petrol or diesel. This petrol or diesel with certain regulations will keep on moving to the engine. That is the IC engine. You will have to control the amount of fuel that is going to move in and that will control to some extent the engine. And the engine will then provide the power to the drivetrain. So, by increasing, decreasing the fuel injection, I can increase or decrease the power mm. and then of course, the drivetrain. Mm. The how does the torque speed works? We will learn that in due course. Mm. So, the important thing is fuel tank and the engine. Now, what happens 
hydraulics or battery electricity driving power brakes. So, what happens earlier this vehicle always had everything mechanical forces. So, primarily the motor driving the rotating motors will give you hydraulic power hmm? that used to be used for brakes, power steering and air conditioning. So, the hydraulics you will drive when you drive the motor you will drive the uh, engine from the engine rotary motion you will create hydraulics which will would have driv driven power brakes if you need a power brakes. If you need ordinary brakes you will only use it your human force, but if you need a power brake then even with small force you are able to brake fairly fast you needed a power brake. So, you had a hydraulic power brake, you had a hydraulic power steering otherwise you may require a large force and if you want hydraulic power steering you only do a certain amount hydraulic helps you do the steering. The air conditioner was also hydraulic because hydraulic will drive the air conditioner motor and that will give you hydraulic. Now, this even in a, in a petrol vehicle today it exists, but it is gradually shifting to electric. That shift is happening even before the electric vehicle is coming. So, generally instead of using hydraulic what you do is that you con connect the engine shaft to a dynamometer. Dynamometer will generate electricity. This el el electricity is called auxiliary power. Hmm? This is not used to drive the vehicle because in a in a electric vehicle the electricity will be used to drive the vehicle, but this is auxiliary power. It will be used to drive all the electronics, communication, sensors, light and a small battery and it may even drive power brake, it may drive power steering, it may drive air conditioning and therefore, I have put hydraulics or battery electricity driving power brakes, power steering and air conditioner. Now, since you have a battery and you have electricity therefore, in it, it can also assist in driving the wheels. When it assists in driving the wheels, you essentially get what is called hybrid engine. Primary engine is from the fuel and engine IC engine, but if you get the battery to assist the drive that becomes hybrid. Huh? Otherwise of course, engine shaft to drive the hydraulics for auxiliary power that is what is done. We are not going to spend much time on the hydro thing. There is a concept called regeneration. Now, regeneration actually is associated with electric vehicles, but once you have a small battery and this auxiliary power which is electrical power, you can also use regeneration. What is regeneration? When you decelerate or climb down, decelerate, what do you have to do? you have to apply brake. Now, you can apply brake and when a wheel is rotating you can apply brake and slow it down by frictional forces that will be converted to heat and get lost. Alternatively, you can use the rotating wheels huh, or rotating engine to drive to, to drive a, 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 a generator. Now, what is happening? The generator will take power away from the wheels and produce electricity. That electricity can then be stored in this battery that you have. So, you, you are not really wasting the energy in slowing down the vehicle. You are actually converting that energy into what is called regenerative electricity, regenerated electricity put it back into the battery and later on use it. That is called regenerative brakes. You design what is called regenerative brakes. And the regenerative brakes work started even before the electric vehicle became predominant. Of course, the major role of regenerative braking will be in electric vehicles, but even in a if you have IC engine vehicle a petrol vehicle you may have some regenerative 
power and the regenerative power is also fed to the battery and the battery will drive all the auxiliary. So, auxiliary uh, engine, uh, usage el electricity will not necessarily come only from IC engine, it will come either IC engine or from the regenerative, Re it is a generator which will produce electricity and do this. Petrol pump is used to fill the vehicle, fill the, the uh, fuel tank. So, you drive to the uh, petrol pump, the fuel tank is filled, fuel tank will give you petrol or a diesel to drive the engine and this engine will drive the drive train, hmm, will drive the vehicle, can engine also be used to drive hydraulics and the hydraulics can use as auxiliary device. It can also you drive a dynamometer to produce electricity and there can be regenerative braking. All this has been there even before electric vehicles came in. What change the electric vehicle brought? Now, how did this shift took place? In a petrol vehicle, engine and engine control did the torque and speed. You of course can increase the power, but torque and speed then you control. In electric vehicle, this engine, IC engine and engine control was is replaced by a motor and a controller, which controls the torque and speed. Finally, it is the same torque and speed, but it is motor and controller. So, the motor and controller is the heart of an electric vehicle. The more efficient you make, better motor and controller you make, better you have things. So, remember the IC engine will and the engine control will be replaced by a motor and a controller for the more control um, motor. This controller is electric control, electric, uh, electric controller. The second is there is a fuel tank and petrol for petrol injection pipe. Now, instead of fuel tank and petrol, you have battery and electricity is stored in the battery. Just like petrol is stored in the fuel tank, you have electricity stored in the battery and then you do current control drive. You control the current that goes to the motor and that you by which you can control the power and from the power you can get torque or speed that you really want to. So, this is the first change. Fuel, the engine and engine control become motor and controller, fuel tank and petrol becomes battery and electricity. So, the equivalent of a fuel tank is a battery. I even in the introduction I pointed out while the two play a very very similar role, but there are a lot of difference. Fuel tank is a, at most a few thousand rupees, small battery, huge cost, maybe a few lakhs of rupees, heavy and large size. All this will be a issue, but on the other hand, petrol is expensive today at 100 rupees per liter, even higher. Electricity is much, much uh, uh, cheaper. Hmm? You get it in India at 5 rupees per kilowatt hour. And we will talk about 1 kilowatt hour is how many kilometer? We will talk about it. Hmm? So, and similarly, 1 liter of petrol is how many liter? Okay. It depends on the vehicle. That is one thing that how much a liter of petrol, how many way um, my kilometers will it drive? A kilowatt hour of petro, uh, electricity, how many kilometers will it drive? For example, I drive electric vehicle for last six years. Uh, one kilowatt hour of that electrical power there drives about eight kilometers. It's a mid-size sedan vehicle. A liter of petrol would probably drive 12 so, kilometers. So, my 1.5 kilowatt hour of electricity is roughly equal to a liter in my vehicle. It will differ from vehicle to vehicle. And that is not the most efficient vehicle. My vehicle is 6 years old. Today, the motors have become much, much better. So, 1.5 kilowatt hour of electricity will cost. 7 rupees 50 paise, 8 rupees. A liter of petrol, 100 rupees. So, you can see 20 times more expensive. 
But on the other hand, petrol tank, as I told you, maybe 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 rupees. My battery costs one and a half lakhs rupees. That is something that we have to really take into account. Then, in a petrol vehicle, you have hydraulic or electric battery. Either you, once you drive the engine, you can convert that power into hydraulic power. And hydraulic power can you be used for all kinds of things. As I told you, power brakes, power steering, air conditioner, or you use a dynamometer, create electric power, you put a battery, and then that electricity can be used in small battery to, to for all auxiliary power. It can drive your power steering, brakes, air conditioner, all communication device, etc. etc. So, this is what is done in petrol vehicle. Engine drives hydraulics for auxiliary power. In electric vehicle, you do not need any hydraulics. You already have electricity. You already have a battery. Except the battery may be at some voltage and your devices that may be needed may be at some other voltage. So, you will need DC is a converter to convert battery voltage to desired level to drive auxiliary including power brakes, steering, air conditioning, including electronics, communication and sensor. So, you need DC DC converters. So, it depends on what the battery voltage is and then converters. That is some may one change. Then, what do you do? When you run out of petrol, you go to a petrol pump and you fill the petrol in a petrol vehicle. There is a fuel tank which has got empty, you fill it. Fuel tank will show it is so much empty, so much full. That is what you need to do. In an electric vehicle in a similar manner, the battery energy will be shown like a fuel tank. If battery is full, battery is getting empty. As it gets to an empty, you need to go to a battery charger station to fill electricity or charge the battery. In many ways, very similar and yet the big difference. The biggest difference is that battery is expensive, fuel tank is inexpensive. Electricity is inexpensive, petrol is expensive. But that is the mapping that you need to do. The rest of the vehicle can change or need not change. Then regeneration to charge battery. That is primarily electric vehicle. Electric vehicle will always have regeneration because you already have a motor and in fact, if you drive the motor in the reverse direction, it acts as a generator. Very easy to design that. So, in fact, motor come generator is there. So, you just start braking by trying to drive the motor in opposite direction. That will pro provide you brake braking, slowing down and that can give you electricity which you recharge the battery and that is called regenerative shun. On the other hand, for petrol vehicle, this is a totally new subsystem. You need to create electric brake, you need to create a generator which will generate electricity, you need to have battery to add that. Older uh, petrol vehicles did not have any. I remember 25 years back, none of these things were there. In last 5, 10 years, lot of things have come up. Hmm? But that is the change that takes place. Now, given the change, what happens? If you remember, this is what happens. So, there is a battery, there is a controller. Battery and controller is same as a fuel tank and fuel injection control. Then there is electric motor instead of IC engine and the same drive train. And here also is the same motor and controller power is equal to torque into speed. That does not change. That is a fundamental equation. So, if you have a certain amount of power for the, from electric motor, hmm, you can then get a certain torque and speed. Torque into speed is power. Remember, this equation will be very, very useful. Now, battery and the controller, the current I drives more or less energy into electric motor. You want more power, you drive larger current. If you have less current, the power is lower. So, the voltage is nearly constant. Voltage of bat, volt, battery voltage. It is a current that you change. Power is equal to V by I. Now, V is nearly constant. 
it depends. V you can when you design the vehicle, you can choose V to be 48 volt, 350 volt, 650 volt. But that's a battery is nominally at that voltage. Current is what you will change. As you change the current, you will get more or less power. That power will give you a torque into speed. Now you can get more torque, less speed. That depends on the kind of electric motor. You can you can control I and therefore the power, and you can control torque or speed. You can't control both. Once you control power and torque, speed is fixed. If you control speed, uh, then torque is fixed. Then of course, as I pointed out, there are DC DC converters convert the battery voltage to the desired voltage because my battery voltage may be 48 volt, light may be 5 volt or 12 volts. So, I need a DC DC converter or battery voltage may be 350 volts, lights may be same 5 volt, my radio may be 5 volt, 12 volt. Hmm? Um, so, you need DC DC converters, number of them to convert the battery power. Now, you do not need auxiliary battery anymore, battery power to desired voltage. Mm -hmm. and including power brakes. Now, it is easy. You design power brakes mm -hmm. and electrically driven, electricity for lighting and other thing, air conditioning mm -hmm. and any other things including all electronics in the vehicle, communication, sensors, light. You push a button, windows open, you push another button, something else happens, control all your lights control your wiper motor, again electricity, all this will require electricity and all that it may require is a small DC DC converter from your voltage of the battery to the voltage that wiper motor requires. Hmm? That is the DC DC converters. And of course, a very, very important part is regeneration during deceleration. So, what you do, your motor, you drive in opposite direction, you try to drive in opposite direction, you are generating electricity. As a result, it is slowing down the vehicle, mechanical power converted to electricity and this will go and charge back the battery. Now, what does it mean? Battery, you, you are drawn out so much energy, now you are pushing back the energy. That regenerative power recharges the battery. Of course, that regenerative power is only recovering. You started driving at high speed, now you are slowing down. So, you are recovering part of the energy. When you are accelerating, you use the energy. We will look at all those things. When you decelerate, you recover some of the energy. But that will be a small fraction of the energy that you had already spent, you are recovering. Now, after you drive certain distance, your battery will start run out, running out. Then you will need to go to a battery charger to fill electricity or what is called charge the battery, similar to a petrol pumps. So, this is the analogous between the electric vehicle and this.